Next question from Giovanni Martinez, a math teacher from Linwood, California, USA. I am working on reverting. One big question I have is, was the Quran created with everyone in mind? Why are certain rules applied to everyone even though we are all different? For example, drinking alcohol. I know it is bad because people get violent or can crash a car. But what if a person doesn't act violent and knows how to control and not to be drunk? Are those people allowed to drink moderately? It's a very important question asked that is the Quran meant for everyone? Is it a book for the whole of humanity? And if so, then why are the rules the same? She agrees that the rule laid by the Quran not to drink is correct for most of the people as many get drunk, they may have an accident when they drive the car if they are drunk. But there are people who can drink and not get drunk. There are people who after drinking, they can drive the car and not have a crash or an accident. So the question is, is the Quran meant for everyone? And if so, then why is the rule of prohibition of alcohol for everyone? As far as the Quran is concerned, the Quran is not only for the Muslims or for the Arabs, it is meant for the whole of humanity. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 52, that this is a book for humankind. Let them take warning therefrom. Let them know there is one God. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 185, Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed as a guidance for humanity, as a criteria to judge right from wrong. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Zumur, chapter number 39, verse number 41, that Quran is the book for the whole of humanity. The Quran says in Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 40, verse number 1, that Quran is the book revealed for the whole of humanity so that it may lead people from darkness to light. So the Quran is not meant only for the Muslims or the Arabs. The Quran is meant for the whole of humanity. Her basic question, is that if the Quran is meant for the whole of humanity, then why are the laws same for all human beings? And the example given was the prohibition of alcohol. As far as the Quran is concerned, Quran does not prohibit everything for everyone. Certain things which are detrimental and harmful for most of the human beings, Allah has made haram. For example, Alcohol, drinking alcohol is haram for everyone. Zina, adultery, fornication, haram for everyone. But certain things which are harmful for some and not to majority, the prohibition is limited. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 168, that, Ya you are nas, O humankind, eat of that which is lawful and good. That means Allah is telling in the Quran to the whole of humanity, eat what is lawful. Lawful means permitted generally to all the human beings. What is unlawful, don't have it. What is prohibited, don't have it. What is prohibited? Alcohol is prohibited. Having poisonous things is prohibited. Gambling is prohibited. Zina, adultery, fornication is prohibited. It says, have the food which is lawful and good. So amongst the food which are unlawful are prohibited. Now we come to know that certain food may be good for some people or may be good for majority but may not be good for certain people. For example, sugar is good for energy. It is good for a normal human being. But if a person has diabetes, then sugar is not good for you. So having sugar an excessive level, if you have excessive diabetes, a high category of diabetes, According to Islam, you should not have sugar. But for other people, it is good. So you can have sugar. So general ruling is what is bad for the majority of the human beings becomes prohibited. Coming to your question that alcohol 
Many people get drunk, but some people don't get drunk. Many people when they drive the car, when they are drunk, they can do an accident. Some people don't. So what if I know that I can drink alcohol and drive the car and know I will not have an accident. So why should alcohol be prohibited for me? Your question is exactly similar to a person. A villager comes to a city and he sees the traffic signals. The red, the green, and if red means you have to stop, green you have to go. Then he sees the signal and he asks the question that why is the person who breaks the signal fined? When the person who comes at the traffic signal, he sees the red sign. A person can see very well that no car is coming from the right, no car is coming from the left, no car is coming from the front, and he breaks the signal. Then why does the policeman give him a fine? The reason is that if it's a red signal means that there are other cars permitted to go either from the left direction or from the right direction or from the front you should stop even though you can see that there's no car coming you cannot say that i know that if i break the signal i will not do an accident and you may be correct but you have to follow the rule of the country because to let the traffic flow smoothly there has to be a rule and regulation even though you know very well that there's no car coming from the front and if there's a red signal that you cannot go straight and yet you go straight, if the police sees you or if the camera snaps you, there will be a fine for you. Logically thinking, the accident didn't take place. So why should the police fine you? Why should the camera click the photograph of your car and give you a fine later? Logically, with a limited logic, a person coming from the village will think it is absurd. But the person who lives in the city and who is intelligent will know this is the rule of the law. When you have a rule, what you do to prevent traffic, you have a signal. When you are preventing the accident to take place, most of the time it will be good for you. Sometimes you may waste a few minutes because the signal is showing red color. Even though there are no cars, but this is the system. Though if you go straight or you go on the right, there will not be an accident. But you have to follow the rule for the uniformity. You cannot say that I am sure that there is no car in the front and there will not be an accident. And the police is also sure. But this is the rule that normally when the other cars are permitted to go, there may be a car coming fast from the left which you may not see. And there may be an accident, the chances may be less. This is the rule. So similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator. He knows what things are good or bad for the human beings. He is our creator. He is more knowledgeable than the best of doctors in the world. As a general rule, when you have intoxicants, alcohol, whiskey, rum, what happens? In the human being, there is an inhibitory center which prevents you from doing things which are wrong. For example, if you want to go for the call of nature, your inhibitory center will tell you, don't do it here. Go to the washroom and go for the call of nature there. Now, when you are intoxicated, this inhibitory center is inhibited. So, you may do the call of nature in your clothes in front of everyone. The inhibitory center tells you that these are your elders, you have to respect them. When you are intoxicated, the inhibitory center is inhibited. You speak with abusive language to your elders, to your parents. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows very well what are the ill effects of alcohol and there are a list of diseases that can take place cirrhosis of liver oesophagus cancer cancer of the stomach and the list is long you can refer to my talk on dietary laws in islam where i've described in details all the diseases that can take place and according to the world health organization every year about three million people die only because of intoxicants and you know very well all the human beings don't have intoxicants more than 25% of the human population are Muslims and almost all the Muslims don't have alcohol. There may be a few small percentage, but as a whole, we are the largest community of teetotalers that don't touch alcohol. So though maybe less than 50% of the people may be having alcohol, but the number of deaths every year are more than 3 million. How do you know that when you have alcohol, you will not get intoxicated? Every alcoholic that you meet, 
initially he started drinking as a social drinker no alcoholic said that he will become an alcoholic and he started drinking all the alcoholics when they start they start drinking as social drinkers and most of them end up being alcoholics how do you know whether you will get a disease or not but the start see they tell us that majority of the people who have intoxicants they have various diseases and allah is the creator that's the reason even if you say that i will have one peg and i will not get intoxicated so why should alcohol be prohibited for me what guarantee can you give that you will have only one peg it's an addiction possible you have a lot of self control many a time you can but even if you get intoxicated once in a lifetime and in that state of intoxication if you commit incest incest means having sexual relationship with your close blood relations mother and son father and daughter brother and sister can you forgive yourself and today the studies they tell us that majority of the people who do incest majority most of them they are in a state of intoxication so when allah subhanahu wa taala knows that those things which are more loss as allah says in the quran the first verse on intoxicants to be revealed in the quran wasn't prohibiting intoxicants the first verse regarding intoxicants to be revealed in the quran was surah baqarah chapter 2 verse number 219 which says that in the intoxicants there is profit and loss but the loss is more than the profit when this verse was revealed it only gave an indication in the intoxicants there is profit as well as loss but the loss is more than the profit the second verse on intoxicants that was revealed was surah nisa chapter number 4 verse number 43 which says that do not pray when you are intoxicated that means intoxicants became prohibited only during the time you have to offer salah indirectly since a muslim has to offer five times salah he could not have intoxicants at day time maybe after isha it didn't say you can have alcohol but it prohibited you that you cannot pray when you're intoxicated that means a person could have alcohol after isha salah and maybe before fajr salah he becomes so it's not saying you can have but says during prayer you cannot come intoxicated and the final prohibition came in surah maida chapter number 5 verse number 90 ya ayyuhal ladhin amanu o you believe innama al khamru wal maisuru most certainly intoxicants and gambling wal ansabu wal azlamu dedication of stones divination of arrows rizum min amali shaitan these are certain hand work first the nibul alakum tuflihum abstain from this hand work that may prosper so here when surah maida chapter 5 verse number 90 was revealed then the final ban on intoxicants came before that it only gave indication that in it is loss and profit loss is more than profit then came the indication do not pray when you are intoxicated and final ban came that it is totally prohibited and once this verse of the quran was revealed barrels of alcohol were thrown on the streets of madina never to be filled again and today the world knows very well the ill effects of alcohol yet it's permitted why more than a century ago in usa they had planned to ban alcohol and they banned it for several years but unfortunately there was bootlegging the government was going to collapse they had to again get it back which medical doctor in his true sense would ever agree that intoxicants alcohol whiskey these are good for health it's not it has the kick that's it so allah subhanahu wa taala who's the creator who knows what is good and bad for the human beings he has set this rule so because the quran is for whole human kind that's the reason alcohol is banned for everyone if the quran wasn't meant for whole of humanity i said okay this type of person who has very good will power and this type of person who can abstain okay can have intoxicants no the quran is for whole of human kind it's a test so because the quran is for whole of human kind there's a general rule that's the reason when you're driving a car in the city if the traffic light says red even if there is a car in front of you or not you have to stop 
You cannot say there's no car in front of me, so why can't I break the signal? If you break the signal, you'll be fined. Similarly, whether you're intoxicated or not, because intoxicants are bad for health, Allah has prohibited you. If you drink it even once, you'll be punished. The same rule as for traffic signals and the rule for all the citizens are the same. Similarly, the Quran is meant for the whole of humanity and Allah has made this rule common for all the human beings. Hope that answers the question.